wrist. Go easy. Just let me turn. I'm Bill Moyers. On any one day in this country, there are about 15,000 women serving time in jail. Many come from broken homes. Most started on crime when they were young. And over half are mothers. Mothers whose children are likely one day to follow them into crime and jail. So we're gonna call your husband back again. And for this report is from one jail in Miami. The women here are either awaiting trial, most don't have the money for bail, serving short sentences for victimless crimes, or moving on to prison for serious crimes of violence. This is the newest women's detention center in the country. It is trying to be more than just a jail, but the odds are tough. In this hour, you will meet some of the women inside.
I don't know what you would call a crime, you know, but I did shoot a person. Ah, uh, burglary. I came to jail for prostitution. Uh, for a possession of firearm and a possess they say possession of heroin. Um, first degree murder, armed robbery, kidnapping. So they got me in here for armed robbery that I didn't commit, strong armed robbery that I didn't even commit. <laughs> How many women come through here in the course of a year? 10,000. 10,000 through uh -huh. here? Through here. Between 9 and 10,000 women are arrested annually in Dade County, Florida. Is there a typical female offender? No, there's not a typical female offender. I've done a lot of reading, you know, on the subject and a lot of the studies since the census report in 1970. And one report will say she's white and 22 and no children. Another one will say, no, she's black and 18 and has three kids. You know, it, it, it's very different. And I think each woman has to be looked at independently and there is no atypical female offender. I am branded already. When a robbery in this city is committed, I'm one of the, and a white girl was involved, I'm one of the first girls that always they come and pick up, always. Always. They know you? Well, I'll tell you, I went to jail in one year 77 times for loitering and prowling, which was thrown out. It's, they can't arrest you for that. Yeah, they know me. Oh, boy, boy. Girls are going home. You better get it. Get it, Julie. <laughs> get it. Boy, you let it. Get it, Julie. That's the way you go. Thank you. We got it. We got it. Come on. I'm here for conspiracy. Somebody had to tell on me. <laughs> they would have told I wouldn't have been this son of a gun. But, mm, 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 that's a, I'm a good girl too, you know. What do you do? Salt and pepper. Why? Cocaine. They say cocaine. I said nothing. Me and a co-defendant who they haven't uh, apprehended yet was supposed to have robbed a man for his glasses and his car keys in January, but they never picked me up until March. There was no warrant out. The man just was looking for me and contacted the police when he saw me. And that's what they call a robbery. That's why you're here. Yes. One of the reasons. The other one is a federal charge. Which is? Um, forgery, aiding and embedding, conspiracy. Like I told you, I was extradited from Toronto, and they've got a treaty, the U.S. and Canada, for what? extradition. And they extradited me to face the trial. What way of charges? Importing cocaine into Florida. Everything that I've done wrong or they've said I've done wrong is all drug orientated. None of my crimes started till I started messing with narcotics, which I never learned about until I came to jail. Well, when I was 14, I had fake ID and I ran away and came to Miami and I went to jail and there was two girls in there that had scars all over their arms. And I said, oh, why are you sick all the time? Why are those scars on your arm? They said, we're going to show you. When they got out, they showed me. What did they show you? They showed me heroin and you know, nobody forced me into doing it. I indulged my own self after seeing what the feeling was, you know? I mean, I did it for survival. What I did, I'm rather not say, but I did it for survival. You see, now people that got houses to put up and all of this thing and got something to back them, sign yourself out, it's fine. A chick comes in through customs with her baby, full shoes, full of cocaine, because she's married to a cop, she walks out the door. Spare me, you know? That's not what's happening. So they're watching the small ones, the poor ones. You ain't got no money, you're not going nowhere. Do you think there's many times, unfortunately, I'm a prostitute or have indulged in prostitution? You think there's times that uh, policemen haven't approached me and said, Judy, if you open up your blouse tonight, uh, you won't have to go to jail. Don't worry about a thing. You think that hasn't happened to me? I haven't had to get in the back of a police car, unfortunately, and ride to a field and stay there with a the policeman for a while. There hasn't been a time that I haven't gone to a courtroom and had to go in a back room and do something and got released. Unfortunately, that's the truth. You know, I'm not the only one that could say this. There's others. But uh, who's going to believe me? You know, look at my record.
Of the many crimes that bring women here, the majority involve prostitution or narcotics or both. Once you're hooked on the stuff, you hustle to support your habit. Usually the trip starts early. When I was younger, I always thought about it, you know, wondered what it was like, you know. And so I just went out and I tried it, and I, I saw that it was easy money, you know. How much did you make from it? A night? Yeah. I don't know, it depends on how hard you want to work, you know. Give me you an can make You can make anywhere from two to five, you know. It depends on how hard you want to work. 200 to 500? Yeah. Do you think prostitution should be a crime? Uh-uh. Why? Because everybody in this world is doing it. Some doing it legal, some doing it illegal. You think you got a bum deal? Yeah. In what way? The police, they just too hard on the women out there. Because, I mean, okay, I can understand if, you know, we offer to commit to them. But half the time we don't. They pick us up for nothing. I'm in here. I've been picked up 20, about 23, 24 times, and about half of them ain't even real. It's just because they know what I do. You just started six months ago, and you've already been picked up 22 times? Just because I was known as a prostitute. Does, does any of them have over 20 dollars? Over 10 dollars. I bet you that if you was to go to any jail, like this one, you would find more prostitutes than you would find anything. I mean, even if they stole something, they are prostitutes too. Mary, you looking for somebody for uh, Yeah. And when they called out Whitney, finally he gave me 60 days in jail for prostitution. And I wasn't even doing nothing. The officer solicited me, I didn't solicit him. But it's my word against his. You go to court, you try to talk against the officer, man. The judge ain't gonna listen to you. You poor black, misused and mistreated. They ain't got nobody to back. Ain't got nobody behind you. You just part of the system, floating. If you got money, you can get out of trouble. If you poor like me and ain't got nothing, you're gonna always be down in the gutter. You're gonna get you're gonna get jammed one way or the other, whether you got whether you got money or whether you don't. Poor people catch hell. Trying to get it. Trying to get money and surviving. And then when you go out, when you leave out of here, try to get a decent damn job. So what's wrong with trying to make a little piece of money to survive, pay my rent, pay my car note? You know? It's my body, you know? I can do with it, you know, as I please. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Just trying to get some money and live, that's all. Main reason why I be out there, I can't get a job. Not, it's not because of the education, because I got my education. It's just the race. Um, I don't even want to discuss that, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can go to a job and say the boss, he's a white man, okay? He might not want you because of your complexion. It's not, because you can be the, the, the brightest person there, and he still won't accept you. Okay, now... I, I know a lot of people who, who've been working on one job for 15 to 20 years, my whole lifetime, and haven't been raised, haven't had a raise or nothing, but they break their necks every day to get something. So I say like this, I'm going to do what I got to do to survive, and if it take me to sell my body, I'm going to do it. If the police like it, if the mayor, the president, or anybody else, I'm going to live. It's, it's only normal for a man to date a woman. And, and you know, if he, can't, if he ain't satisfied at home or something, you know, he sees you on the street, if it's the only way he can get you by paying for it, he's going to do it. Any man, you know, all kinds of men. I've had them from 15 to, you know, 90, you know, there's, there's millions of them. I don't see anything know? wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. As long as somebody ain't getting hurt in the process, getting That's robbed right. or killed like a lot of girls. I know, you know, I'm honest about it. I don't know. from the second floor going down. Lunch, ladies. 
and in Miami, 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 28 degrees Celsius. They put you in there for two weeks? Yeah, after the other girl went to prison, she was still in there. You've been in here a year? A year. Going on a year. 13 months now. How long are you going to be here? I don't know. I don't have no time yet. What's the charge? Murder. First degree? It was, and then it dropped to the second. How old are you? 21. No. See, I got to cut some scars off of her. I was defending me. You were pregnant in jail. I was pregnant when I, I was pregnant in jail. That was the second time I had been in jail. See, I had 33 counts of worthless checks because I was a heroin junkie and I supported my second husband's habit also. And it, I was writing. It started out the checks were covered, but then to a certain point, after that, they, you know, we didn't have funds in the bank to cover. And since I was an addict, I just wrote checks. Tell me, what kind of conditions did you live in? I was just a rotten egg. You know, my parents did everything they they could for me. You there was a, a lot of hostility in my family. My mother and father argued quite a bit, more than quite a bit. How'd you get started? I think I stole something. Yeah, that's my problem. I can't keep my hands off other people's stuff. I don't know, I seem to feel that if you have money and you get caught stealing, they say that you're a kleptomaniac if you poor you receive. I mean, that's how I feel, you know. How many children do you have? Eight. Eight kids? Yeah. Who's taking care of them? Uh, Protective Services has two of them, and my oldest son, he uh, takes care of the rest of them. How old is he? Fourteen. And the others range down from fourteen? Yeah, down from fourteen. Is there an adult in the house with no. you? No. They're by themselves? Well, like I said, my oldest son is... My oldest son... Uh, he got, I guess by me being in and out of jail most of his early life, he forgot to be a little boy. He just came from infant to, you may as well say adulthood. I mean, well, I guess with the mother who's been in and out of jail, he had to, you know. And I'm proud of him for that. What, is it likely that they'll, they'll wind up here? Uh, with my 14-year-old, it's hard to say. I don't think he'll ever turn to drugs because he he hates the idea that I've been on drugs. He he knows what it can do to a family. You know, like it's turned my whole life upside down. It's taken my family away from me. Or how do you stop the cycle of crime? How do you stop doing what you're doing? It depends on how early in a person's life you catch that. A hardcore junkie, like they say I am, I've been on drugs for 15 years. It's hard to stop. It's, it's very, it's easy for a person who has never been on drugs to say, hey, that's it, you know, let's stop. 
But if that person has never went through withdrawals, if that person has never cold turkey, feel that it's a feeling no one can explain. You know, you can read about it, yeah, but reading about it is one thing and experiencing it is another. That's the hard part. You have, oh, my mother, my father, my kids have always, mama, stop, please stop. But yeah, okay, I'm, that's it, I square off. Ten minutes later, I'm somewhere with a spike in my arm, you know? You have to want to stop. While serving time, trusted inmates are permitted to work on county landscaping. They are paid the minimum wage. For some of them, it is their first real job. I never, I don't like to take orders, one thing. And whenever someone told me something to do, I did just the opposite. But what I am telling myself is that even though stealing is fast money, uh, the consequences, if I get caught, and eventually you will get caught, is jail. What they're trying to do here is prepare you for work on the outside. And on a legitimate job, the money may be slow, but I got my freedom, and I've learned to value my freedom a hell of a lot. Out here? Out here, yeah. How do you like this kind of work? I, uh, it gets me out of the facility, so I, I, I like it. it I'm, I like, the, it gives me a better sense of freedom. The jail gives me a sense of freedom where, you know, there's no bars, you know, even though you know you're locked up, you can't go out the front door when you're ready. You kind of, you don't feel so close in where bars and more, well, unless lenient restrictions, you know. I feel, well, in my particular case, I see girls coming in and out for grand larceny or grand theft and they're sentenced to 60 days. I got sentenced for petty larceny to a year. I, at the time, I think the judge felt that he was right. You know, I think he did what he thought he had to do. I had an extensive past, but I don't think you should be sentenced on your past. You know, I did that, I paid for it, that should be it, you know. Uh, all of us at one time or another have did things that we don't want to hang on the line and let the neighbors or someone else, you know, see. We don't want to air these things out. Unfortunately, there are some people who think that your past should be strapped on your back and always be a part of you. I don't think that. I don't, I don't think so. Can you go straight? It's easy to say, yeah, but it's hard to do it. I want to go straight. Uh, I know I have the ability, the initiative to go straight, but I'm going to try. That's all. I, I don't like to make promises that I can't keep. Yeah, they'll be on all weekend. Y'all should go in and film Sally and let them know how to suck <laughs> I say whenever I come to jail and I know I have to stay, I try to get involved with another woman. But you, nine out of ten, you could tell the ones that really want to get involved because even when they come to jail, it could be their first time. You can tell, no, you know, we, nobody's crazy. You could tell if they want to be bothered. And then you could tell them if you don't. And then a lot of them is very outspoken like we are. They tell you from jump what it is. And they never have been here before. But it's nothing that nobody make you do or nothing like that. You have to, that, that have to come from you. And I'm going to make, I'm not going to let the time do me and I'm going to do the time. And I'm going to make my environment as pleasant to me as possible, you know, because I got, you know, I, I only have so much control over what happens to me while I'm in here. <coughs> So the little things that I can do to satisfy my personal needs, I'm going to do them. I'm not going to force myself on anybody and I don't want anyone to feel me because I am bisexual, you know. But I enjoy myself as much as possible and whenever possible without being caught, you know. But if I should get caught, I just hope that they don't stop me before I reach my climax. You know? <laughs> if two women get caught in the act, what do they do, the officers here? You go, you go to the safety cell, and then you go to the disciplinary hearing they have downstairs, which is a little kangaroo court, and they determine the time that you stay in the safety cell. And then it sometimes, uh, it all depends on who the officer is and what that catches you. Sometimes she don't even uh, report it, huh? <laughs> you damn lie! You talking about what Miss Mizzen come and told you? And you going for what she told you? You wouldn't even let me come in here. What was going on? Yes, I did. No, you didn't. I'm sitting right there and asked. 
You were outside when I called Miss Minton. I was sitting right there after Miss Christie. Can I go in there and hear what they got to say? No one told me that you wanted yeah, to Yeah, well, nobody there. never do nothing when it's us. Now the truth, still, we you heard me. This lady here heard me when I asked, no could one, I come no in there? one went in there and told me that you wanted to I asked Miss Christie right there, didn't I? I said, could I go in and see what they have to say? She but said, let me ask Miss Castellan. Well, that's not my fault, I asked. No, I did not hear her. Miss Milton said that she was standing by the door. The, uh, the You said that she was washing TV. Did you let her read that? Yeah. Statement, statement. She said, and she said that the nurse... Yeah, uh, did curse at her before. That the and this that is not our first not time even time. getting into it together, me and Miss Pruitt. Why all of a sudden she want to write me up? I'm sick of these people trying to damn lies. I don't have no reason to lie, Miss Pruitt, and nobody else. Okay. Nurse Pruitt reported to Sergeant Dillett when she went to Pod 2A1. Yep. Inmate Moore asked her for APC medication. When told by Nurse Pruitt that it was not carried on medical cart gave Moore two Tynol tablets, Moore became, began using obscene language and grabbed the Tynol from Nurse Pruitt's hand with such force that Moore broke a fingernail on the nurse's hand. She's telling a damn lie. Until a disciplinary hearing can be held, Moore is placed on a complete cell restriction with a recommendation that she remain on complete cell restriction for a period of one week. Okay, here's a report from the nurse which says the same thing. You want, want me to read that? Well, why she didn't put down what she said to me before I said something to her, and this is not our first time getting into it. Why she just now write it up? And they came back to ask me, was my hand scratched? Miss Milton did. If I was going to do something to her, I would have went on and knocked in her mouth. Okay, well, I have to call some of the witnesses in here first. I don't okay. Even know, do anything and, uh, I do, I'll admit to it. Yes, I did curse her out, and yes, I did snatch the Tylenol, and she made the remark to me first. A lot of people would like to put these women out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And you can't because they keep coming back and they keep, you know, putting fences against you and, and you just can't forget them. They're there. You need to deal with them and you need to open your eyes to it and we need to start saying, well, what can we do to, to turn that around, to change that? When you build the facility like this, you take the philosophy of rehabilitation in that you can work with a person that, they, yes, they can change and that they can improve their sense of self-worth. By and large, we find in many of our offenders, the women particularly, have a very low self-concept. Mm -hmm. You can work on that. You so can say, yes, there, you're a worthwhile right person. There. Yes, you, you can know, do something. This, this will pacify my need for right now. You are uh, whatever involved in crime because of a need that arose? Is that what everybody's saying? That's where my conflict was because I couldn't hang out with the intelligent people because half the time I didn't understand their vocabulary, you know. So I just, finally I found the group that would accept me, so I went to them. That's how I got into getting high. And of course, like she said, one thing led to another. Before I knew it, I was out ripping and stealing for everything I could get. And a long run, you lose. You know, when I was through ripping somebody off that I knew had a lot of money, I felt good about it. I really did. I felt, you know, they got more, to, more than they can handle. They're not going to care. You know, they'll, they'll write it off as an insurance loss, and what's the big deal? You know, my mother's never forgiven me. She used to collect laces, you know, back in Cuba. Here, it's a hard thing to collect, you know. And um, I ripped them all off and sold them all, all to this lady. And that's, you know, to her, that really hurt her, but it just... For some reason, at that point in my life, you know, now I feel really guilty about it and I, you know, would do anything to get them back. But at that point, it was like, you know, here's a, a stab in the back for you for the way you've been stabbing me in the back. Whether you meant to or not, you did. And I'm hurt and I'm suffering because of it. So here's one for you. It was okay, my thing was selling drugs. Okay, I had to feed me, okay? My mother took care of my child for me, she always have. But I felt I was grown, right? And I wanted a job on my own. Okay, but I didn't, I didn't have the, you know, the skills and whatever that they needed. Okay, I could do a job, okay? But right then the need was, all right, you sign out an application, I'll call you tomorrow, okay? All right, but then I have to eat then. I'm hungry then, okay? My thing is, uh, hey, if I take this dope bag and put it in my hand, you know, God, I'm gonna have this money to feed me from now on. You're on the streets, with this knowledge that police know you and they know your past, 
and they're always going to assume that you, like Sally said, either got a gun or got some dope. How do you handle that? I mean, what do you do? Are they, are they looking for you? Are they trying to bust you? Man, That's you know, <laughs> they might as well give you, say, hey, I'm sentencing you for life because it's going to follow you for that long. How many times have you been here? Three times. When was the first time? How old were you at the first time? I had just had my baby. I was 18. I was 18. My mother was the sole provider, and she has nine girls. You know, one bedroom, two bedroom, like little sweat boxes full of people living, trying to work, everybody staying in about eight or nine in one room, each trying to see that the other eat, sleep, and is warm, you know. You know, it's just that environment, and everyone is trying to make it one way or another. Everyone is trying to survive. The first time you were here for an accessory to robbery, what brought you back the second time? Heroin. Were you hooked yourself? Yeah, the time, yeah. How long? I was, I stayed on drugs for four years. How long has it been since you had a... Two. And if you add that up, that's six years, and Ernie's only seven. Six years of his life right. out of seven. Right. He's had a mother who's been... He had a mother he only knew by name. What chance is there for him? A very slim chance. Who do you want to visit? Raina Floyd. Control? Are they ready for contact visiting? Let me check. Turn around. Come on. Hey, Ernie, give me a kiss. When they ask you where I'm at, what do you tell them? Like a jailhouse. You don't like to hear him say I'm in jail? How it make you feel? Sad. Sad? You don't want me to be in jail? I'm not going to be in jail for long. I'm not going to come back for a long time, okay? And I want you to stop looking at me as your sister and look at me as your mommy. I am your mommy, you know. Ernie, hmm. you do know that, don't you? You look just like me. I want you to be with me, Ernie. I love you. I just pray that I can some way relate to him and let him know, you know, why I did these, some of the things that I did, um, and why he was always pushed off on my mom to take care of him and why I was always locked up. When you got pregnant with Ernie, did you want to? When I got pregnant with Ernie? No. <laughs> it just happened. And... It was nothing I could do. It happened, and I tried to evade the issue for a long time that I was pregnant and, you know, hid it from my mom. It's like you don't think that far ahead, you know. You, you, for that moment, it's for that moment, you know. You live for that moment, and then all of a sudden, here's a child, and you don't know what to do. I was in a dream where he yeah, was going to buy me a business, and then I was just going to stop living in the streets. And that was going to be it. I was going to live happily ever after. <laughs> what happened? My balloon popped. <laughs> That's what happened. It's just that uh, in order to make that easy money, you put yourself in a lot of danger. Uh, you end up coming to jail. You end up getting tagged for life. Disco 15 weather forecast for today is sunny, highs in the upper 70s and lows in the upper 60s. More music with Disco 15.
street. So I'm just going to try everything I know. I'll wait around. I was arrested in Jamaica about four months ago. I've been here for four months on a 1972 warrant for air piracy and kidnapping. Hijacking? Yeah. It could be up to 15 years, though, couldn't it? Well, yes, it... Well, I've taken a plea of guilty, and I would be given no more than a maximum of 10 years due to the circumstances surrounding my particular case. They do believe that a maximum sentence is not necessary, so I can't get more than 10 years. You had a child in prison. Yes, I did. My daughter's cared for by some people that I know here in Miami, and um, it's extremely hard to have a child in prison. I don't think, um, I don't think a woman should be forced to go through it. I think there should be some sort of uh, alternative, some sort of alternative to the jail environment. What is likely to happen to that child? Well, the future is really vague, her future. Um, being in jail or having been in jail is a social stigma. Um, it's something that's going to be brought out to her at a later date in um, a number of circumstances. She's, a well, she's well aware of it now. She's only five, she's intelligent, she's perceptive like most children are. She knows perfectly well where I am and I don't think she's too clear on why I'm here, but she does know where I am. It and I can tell it's affecting her now. It is affecting her now. Yeah. Um, it's funny. She's a strong little girl, and, um, you can only see it in her eyes. She doesn't cry when she leaves me. Um, she tends to look away, rather, and I can tell that she's built up a whole bunch of defense mechanisms just in these past few months. She realizes that I'm in a, in a really negative situation, and she sees me in a jail environment. Did all of this occur to you at the time in 1972 when you took part in the hijacking? Well, I didn't have a daughter at that time, and I really can't explain that without going into all the circumstances of my case, which we don't want here. Um, but did it occur to you then when you got pregnant? Well, that's another thing um, that was really unavoidable at the time. I, like I say, we can't go into that, but my pregnancy was an unavoidable thing due to where I was and the fact that there weren't any contraceptives and, you know, basic things like that. It happened in jail and prison. Right, in right. In Cuba. Yes, it was the first visit that I had had for eight months. I had had no communication with uh, the outside world, was never given a lawyer, did not know the time I was going to be in jail, um, did not know where my ex-husband I divorced was, had not received a letter for eight months, and I was allowed to visit with him. Uh, again, <laughs> oh. Anthony, you miss me? Say bye, bye. Tell her bye, bye. Bye, bye. See? See? Yeah. Nobody likes to do time. I'll never get used to doing time. I hate it. I don't. Bl I don't belong here. You know. I don't. I'm not the type of person. I'm all right. I don't need this, man. It's a drag. It's lonely. Think about, wow, if I would have did this instead of that, I wouldn't have been here. The following residents will be eligible for visitation from 3 to 4 this afternoon. Tammy McCowan, Latricia McBurney, Gloria Martinez, hey, Maria I'm, I went over the back to get you two and I was get your lawyer. He went to get you a lawyer. I asked when you say you need a lawyer. I said, well, I go to the bank and get a two hundred dollars. You know what happened? I didn't go to get it. I went to get you two hundred dollars. Get you a lawyer because you say you wanted one. <laughs> he said he ain't back down Monday. He said he gonna come back down Monday. He said he gonna come back down Monday. Yeah, I'll see you Monday. What goes through your mind? Home. Uh, think about the kids, think about my man, and, you know, just wanting to be free because uh, being in jail is not, you know, it's no fun being locked up, but you try to do the best with what you, you know, what you have, so uh, I just lie there and think. A lot of nights I just lay awake, you know, when it's raining, that's the time I like to look out the window, so I think, you know, wow, I wish I was home. I didn't have to be here. 
tell me what you saw the first day you came oh. to the old facility. <laughs> well, the old facility was long hallways with bars going down the hallway. And uh, Captain, Captain Gallagher happened to be his name, uh, met me in the first day at work and showed me through the place. And all I can remember is walking down these gray, dingy halls, solid wall along this side, bars along this side, and all these arms coming out of the bars like this. Cap down, Cap Gallagher, try to have a cigarette. Just, you know, like being in a zoo with caged animals that were just thriving for, you know, the food keeper was there with the food. It was just the kind of sight you don't want to see people in. You know, it's not the kind of values about human beings that you want to treat them like they're animals in a, in a zoo. And even criminals. Even criminals, you know, and I don't care what kind of offense they've, they've committed. Trouble of this world my Lord's coming to this trouble of this world. I'm going home to live with the Lord. There will be no weeping our way. There will be no weeping our wailing. Oh, yeah. Weeping our wailing. I'm gone home to live with the Lord. I won't. To see, to see my mother. I want to see, to see my mother. Lord, I just want oh, yeah. to see my mother. I want to go home to live, to live with my dear love. Praise the Lord. Give a hand. Beautiful. You may get a high off of cocaine or heroin, but honey, you're going to come down after a while. Hallelujah. But the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the Lord's Valley. God, in his precious name, look, Jesus. Look on this young woman, Lord. We thank you for her, Lord God. We want you to look on her, Lord. We want you to stir her, oh, my God, as the evil spirit is. Whatever her reason is, Lord, stir up that spirit that is within her. Thank you, Master. I was the vessel. I prayed. I prayed. I said, Lord. You are the potter. You are the potter. I'm the clay. I'm the clay. Make me over, Jesus. Make me over, Jesus. Make me over, Jesus. Make me over, Jesus. Lord, do it today. Lord, do it today. God bless you. God love you. Sabrina. 
Again, you know, there's a whole value about rehabilitation, and often the public says, well, we, rehabilitation doesn't work. That's the cliche okay. you hear. And people say, well, you can't, you know, it's not worth your time and effort to provide programs for people while they're in jail. Well, why not? You've got them. Why, why let them waste months of their lives just sitting and writing? And that's why you try to make this as pleasant an environment as possible. Well, it's a pleasant environment because, you know, you don't treat people as animals and... Uh, you know, and, and to throw them in a hole and forget about them. So yes, it's pleasant in that, but they're still isolated. You know, they're still incarcerated. They're still kept away from their families and their friends and their ability to go downtown and see the movie on Saturday night. So they are locked up and that's uh, an ever-present awareness here that this is an institution. No matter how nice of an institution, it is an institution. And they've still lost their freedom. And they've still lost their freedom and they're still locked away. But while they are locked away, we should do something with them and pull them. Three, enter three. One, ten, one. All right. Both factors in our, that was in our parentheses here. All right. One times one is what? One, one. Times three. See our sign here? Our multiplication sign? Our raised dot? Which is All right. Give us another problem now. This jail does try. Of 44 women who have finished one of its special rehabilitation programs, only three have returned to jail. Much of the effort is basic, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Three, four. All these efforts are unusual. Most women offenders who are held in jails in this country receive no education, no vocational training, little recreation, and no services for greater self-dependence on relief. Well, uh, from here I go to prison for 18 months. Why? Uh, attempt to burglary, possession of burglary tools and burglary. Well, um, I can't say I'm really guilty and I can't say I'm innocent. But for the charges they have me now, I feel like I was innocent. But the way I got my 18 months, I plea bargained for them. They wanted to give me five years on one of my cases, five on the other, and 15 maximum if I would have took it to trial. So means my husband is locked up right now. <clears throat> I, I couldn't have got no lawyer, you know, a good lawyer. So I had a PD. If I would have took it to trial, even though if, if it would have came out as me being innocent, it's, it's really up to the judge, state attorney. It ain't, you know, whether you're innocent or not. If they, if they want, they don't go by what you were arrested, what you were being charged for, what you were being tried for. They go by your prior record. So I think they, it, you know, like it's, it's, it's a saying, you know, if you got money, money talks, bullshit walks. So if you ain't got no money, I feel like you, you up the creek, you ain't got no damn money, you just fucked up. You gonna be in here till these people
people decide to let you go or whatever they decide to do with you. I don't think uh, I'm going to be able to get no job with um, a record that I've been to prison before. And I'm only 19, I've been to prison twice. So I don't think that's going to be no big help. I don't think these 18 months is going to slow me down. When I get out again, I'm going to be just as wide open as I was when I came in here. This is how I feel now. You know, but you can't predict the future. I don't know how I feel when I do get out. But the way I feel now, if they was to let me out the door right now, I'd go right to the grove and get out. Okay. Yeah, bro. Tell Val I'm going to BCI. Okay. All right. Now, the only thing about them is, uh, try not to pull on too much. To what did I want to do? Have money. Hustle. It wasn't for kicks, it was for money. Yeah, you take a risk. You, you, in other words, you throwing bricks at the penitentiary. That's what I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's a gamble. Every day you wake up in the morning, life is a gamble. You know you're going to gamble something. Miami is a high crime rate area. We get all the narcotics pouring into Miami from all South America. You, you have the same faces coming in all the time. Year in, year out, year in. Doesn't bother them. You got any answers? You've been at this longer than anybody I've talked to. Yes, I think they should build more prisons and put your career criminal in the jail. Your repeated felony offender. Put them in the jail. You put them in there for five years, ten years. These are felons, they're robbers, armed robbers. What about the argument that is often made, officer, that prisons don't heal, prisons don't change, prisons What don't are you going to do? Keep six and seven locks on your doors where they put these people out in the streets again? Is there hope for rehabilitation? They change some, but when they get out in ten months and go back to the same environment, they go back into narcotics, crime, and so forth. So you can paint the walls here and feed them well for 10 months, but out there, it's what they had before. That's right. I know a lot of people out there are getting tired of crime, scared. Tired of crime? Boy, I never... Uh, a country like America. You have to put six locks on your doors. You can't go out in the afternoon, you're afraid. And at night, it's a jungle. You can't go anywhere. What's the government doing about it? What should the government do? I think the government should build more prisons, as I say, for the career felony criminal. Take them off the streets. Maybe we can take one or two locks off our doors. Would you put them in prisons like this? Yes, I think everybody deserves a decent, humane place to live. Even a criminal. Even a criminal. We had to come out of the dungeons. This is certainly out of the dungeon. Yes, it is. A far cry. We're just absolutely one link in the chain, and it's the kind of commitment that the community needs to make to their local jails and to their institutions and then to the people who they turn out. But community after community is saying, we don't have the money. We can't afford it. We mean they can't, they can't afford not to. <laughs> You know, you just cannot afford not to do something for these people and provide them some opportunities to express this. Otherwise, they're going to go back and your crime is going to continue. But the critics say they're going back anyway. But they're not necessarily. You haven't hired them, you haven't trained them, and you haven't given them the opportunity, you know. 
That's that philosophy again, that they're not, not worthwhile, and they are. You know, like, I'm going to go to that um, unemployment place, and they said that they have a federal program we can on the job. That'll, that'll, be, that'll bond me, you know, make me bonded so I can work with it with the money or whatever's involved in the case. Man, you wouldn't believe how many jobs are in the paper. Oh, yes. I'm this sure. is just insurance. They yeah, always be in the paper when you locked up. <laughs> oh, 11, and that's just the first page, and I've got two more pages to look through. I'm going to have to tell them that I've been incarcerated and all that. But i uh, got a lot of people backing me up. But, you know, if they give me a chance to prove myself, that's the whole thing. Okay. Watch your match. I got what are you in for? What do they got you for? Have you been here before? Yes. How many times? Yes, how many times have I been arrested and how many times have I been here? Both. Well, I've been arrested total 43 times. Get out. I was doing time on this year. I did a year here. A year? Fine. Yes, I'm back. I have five years left. need a match? You got a match? Why do I do it? I like money and I like the excitement. It's exciting. You get away. When you get away, it's exciting, but when you get caught, it's. You've been caught now 43 times. Yeah. But I don't have convictions 43 times. How many times convicted? Four. It's not bad. It's not bad. What's it like coming back here? It's like, I mean, how do you feel? Yeah. Routine? Yeah. No, no surprises this time. No. How long do you think you'll stay? In jail? Oh, about nine months. And then? Home. And then? School. And then? Street. When the producers Benjamin and I set out on this project, we discovered that almost no film has been done on the subject. Women in prison haven't been of great priority. And now, given our fear, frustration, and anger about crime, they're in for more neglect. But even in visiting a good jail, if there really is such a thing, you have to ask if all these women should be inside. Most of them are here for nonviolent crimes, and jails don't cure drug addicts of their sickness or prostitutes of their enterprise. Neither do they keep women from repeating, or their children from imitating, their mistakes. The rest of us don't seem to learn much from jails either. Where is the early warning system that would help us to detect young people in trouble and come to their aid before they come here? Who pays attention? Why do we have to wait for the same class of people to commit crimes over and over again? Where is the system for dealing with their children? Why are most of the women who come here poor? And who cares anyway? Difficult questions, but surely a civilized society will keep pressing for the answers until it finds a better alternative than jail for the children left waiting and for the women inside. I'm Bill Moyers.